first we have a recognition. Okay, so we have uh, recognition tonight. We're going to uh, honor two team members of the month, and I've got Mr. Perkins uh, here with, uh, we've got a hockey puck with the team member of the month and Sydney on there, as well as a $50 Amazon gift card we're going to award to two different people. And uh, I don't know if these two people know why they're here, but they're going to find out very quickly. Um, first, first person we're going to award is someone who went way above and beyond and did an unbelievable job for us uh, just uh, a, about a week or so ago. And uh, that's Michelle Grimes, one of our bus drivers. And I want to talk about, before I bring Michelle up here, I want to talk about how amazing of a job that she did. Uh, Michelle's one of our bus drivers, Bus 29, and she was getting ready to drop a student off. And she looked in the rear mirror and saw a car barreling down on the bus. And very instinctively, as a, as a long time bus driver, she shut the door uh, and she started to pull the bus forward to minimize the impact. And this car plowed into her and caused a lot of it, a lot of damage to the car, very little damage to the bus, and zero injuries to the seven students that were on the bus. And if it weren't for her actions, this would have been a, a horrific accident, frankly. Um, you know, so Michelle, we can't give you enough to say how much we appreciate the job that you did, but we would love to honor you as a team member of the month. And frankly, I think we should give Michelle a standing ovation. Absolutely. So congratulations. Now, as Paul Harvey says, you want to know the rest of the story, she was worried about her husband having to fix that bus. That's all that's going through her mind. To be honest about it, her first question today was, when do I get my propane bus back? I hate this diesel bus. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Our next, uh, our next team member of the month is absolutely a fantastic fourth grade teacher for us. Uh, at Peace Mill Elementary, Ilya Ebert. I want to read you her uh, nomination. And you didn't know why you were here either, probably, did you? Okay. All right. I would like to nominate Ilya Ebert for Team Member of the Month. She's a highly effective, competent, and dedicated instructional leader. She collaborates well with other teachers, interacts professionally with parents, and communicates with her students and, and as their needs uh, to all involved. She is respected among her colleagues with her friendly, approachable style and openness to new ideas and ways of teaching. There's a lot more on here, but let's just keep it short and say, you are fantastic. I, I love it when I get to see your class, and we are so blessed that you're one of our teachers. And congratulations, Elia. <laughs> well, we were, we were in Elia's class today with the First Lady, Mrs. Bashir, who was reading to students, and that's how we tricked Elia into coming here, thinking she was going to talk about that, and that was a fantastic thing, too, but, so congratulations. Uh, thank you very much, and congratulations to those that uh, have made a difference as well. Uh, do we have any comments? No comments. All right. Um, if the board doesn't mind, there's a few things I'd like to bring up under new business. Uh, under uh, Roman numeral 8, uh, Roman numeral 8D on the contract, Roman numeral 8D is number 7. Roman numeral 8D, 7. Under what section? The consent? On the consent. Oh, I'm sorry, on the consent. I'm going to pull some things out of consent. Okay. okay. Do you want to do it when we get to consent, or do you want to do it now? I would really bring it up after we go through some of the new business. Okay. okay. When we get to consent, let's go ahead and pull whatever items that you, that you all want. And then uh, I would like to, for us to pull item uh, Roman number 8, uh, approval of job descriptions, I believe. Uh, that, that, that's F2, I believe. Okay. F2. And then Roman number 8, F3. I like to discuss those out of the consent form. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, the first item is uh, to revise 2019 and 
2020 school calendar? <laughs> Uh, the 2019-2020 revised school calendar is attached for your approval. We've had uh, a few makeup days that we have to, again, put on there and get the board to approve. And we've had to move uh, a couple of uh, district staff days to, uh, you know, because of the um, adding in those days. So the recommended motion is to approve the 2019-2020 revised school calendar as presented. You've heard of uh, Tim's recommendation. Is there a motion? I make a motion. Motions made. Second. A second, second. Any yeah. discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Yeah. All opposed, nay. <clears throat> Next one is revised 2021. You all approved the uh, the 2020 2021 uh, school calendar at the last board meeting, but we had one s small error there that we had to fix. Uh, so the revised 2020 2021 school calendar is attached for your approval. There is a change in the last day for students <laughs> by one day. There were only 171 days and we needed to have 172, so we had to shift that just by one. Uh, so the recommended motion is to approve the revised 2020-2021 school calendar as presented. You hear Superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Say no, we'll, we'll vote. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Paul's nay. Motion carries. The next is donations for boys in soccer uniforms and equipment. Donations valued at more than $1,000 must be approved by the Board of Education. An Elkhorn Middle School parent would like to make a donation in the amount of $2,000 to be used for boys soccer uniforms and equipment. So first of all, thank you to that parent. That's fantastic. Uh, the recommended motion is to approve a $2,000 donation for Elkhorn Middle School soccer uniforms and equipment as presented. You've heard of Tim's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. The motion is made. Is there a second? Second. And second. Any discussion? On behalf of the board, we appreciate that too. I'm That's very for the generous. Board. Okay. Um, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed, <coughs> nay. Motion carries. Bank. Future pay program. Uh, John, yeah, John Shasky from Fifth Third Bank and Shane Smith are both here to present to the board for consideration of a virtual card program um, that is used by several other local school districts to pay vendors that accept these types of payments. One of the primary benefits to the district is the rebate associated with the program. So this is just another way in which we can pay our bills but we get rebates back for paying with this virtual card. And they can talk about those things uh, once you make the recommended motion to approve the FCS use of the Fifth Third Bank virtual pay program. Okay. We have to get a, a motion and a, and a second. I like a motion. Okay, the motion is made to approve. Is there a second? Second. 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 Go ahead and give it to you. All right. All in favor? Well, don't let no, no, I'm sorry. Hang on a minute. We can go ahead let them talk about it just so yeah so i provided a couple of powerpoints for you guys to review i want to just briefly skim through the first one and then we'll look a little more in depth at the second one that's got the actual rebate numbers for the district uh, but this is a fifth eight fifth third commercial card and e-pay program it's a consortium that consists of 51 educational institutions uh, as of 2019 there's 32 school districts seven colleges universities eight general education organizations and four private school organizations that are currently participating in this program. In 2018, there was approximately $57 million that was spent through this program with a rebate payout of approximately $652,000 back to the educational institutions. And it's essentially what it is, it's a virtual card program. Uh, a single-use virtual card number is produced for each payment to each vendor. It's highly secure. It forces the suppliers to take exactly what is authorized. It creates automation efficiencies and savings over checks. Uh, it's also an integrated program with Munis, which is very uh, beneficial. And then Fifth Third often uh, manages the supplier outreach. Uh, for us. So what that means is that all the vendors that we use, they'll reach out to them to see if they will accept this type of payment and so that we would be able to pay these vendors with this process versus sending them a check. So the rebates, which is the, the, the big thing that we're here to talk about, if you look at the uh, PowerPoint presentation, <clears throat> it shows these are actual numbers that I provided to Fifth Third 
with our vendors uh, spending. And so they analyze these vendors. They know the vendors that accept the payments because they're dealing with uh, several other uh, educational institutions already. So they know the vendors that accept these payments. And so the green box that's highlighted in red on the right side of the page shows you that we have approximately 2 million, 200 and whatever that number is. Those are the dollars that we spent last year that they know the vendors would accept that type of payment. If you want to go to the next page, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this shows you what our rebate would be. Now, I do want to point out from the previous slide, that was only at about a 55% capture rate. That's what they estimate the first year. They know that we're not going to be able to get every vendor that accepts the payment onto the program in the first year. So uh, at the highest, 55% capture rate, our rebate, if we use this program, would be $32,434. Those rebates are paid in December, if I understand that correctly, the first quarter of the following year first quarter of the following year. So that's when the rebates would be uh, sent back to the school districts. Um, several other of the immediate local districts, as we mentioned, utilize it. I've talked to several of the other finance officers that are very happy with this program. There are a lot of um, uh, you know, people really just speak highly of it. So I wanted to bring that information to your attention. And, uh, Hopefully we can answer any questions that you have about the program now. Uh, what I want to ask, I mean, to simplify this, it's we've got, it's, is this kind of like a uh, debit card for, you know, our bank? They just are able to draw from that uh, when they are needed, whatever's. Not exactly. It's a little more uh, precise with that. We, we would work up the payments as we do any other. We, receive the invoice from the vendor that accepts this type of payment. The integration with Munis allows us when we do a check run, instead of doing a check run, this is considered a card run, Munis creates the pay file with all the vendors that accept that. We send that pay file to Fifth Third for the exact amounts that are on the invoices. Fifth Third then sends an encrypted file to the vendors and the vendors have to initiate that they receive the payment. It's a, it's a virtual card number. It's only good for one time, and it's only good for the exact amount. So if you accept the card and you send me an invoice for $100, we're going to put that in Munis. We're going to initiate the file of Fifth Third. Fifth Third is going to send you an encrypted email that you owe, or that you're going to receive $100 from us. You initiate that, and you can get $100. You can't get $101. You can't get $99. You get $100. A hundred dollars. So. And Fifth Third, is that our bank? No. Okay. But we have to have money set up in another bank account? Uh, no. We, we would pay them. We would transfer the money to them when we okay. pay, pay those. So okay. we, we can still, our banking, nothing changes with our current banking situation. So could you name some of the school districts that you have talked to, please? Yeah, Woodford, my wife has used it for a couple of years in Woodford County. Uh, Randy Cutright, who was the interim, he used it at Scott County. He was actually the, the gentleman that told me when I first started that I needed to check into this program. Uh, Fayette County uses it. Um, I'm not sure who the other districts are, but I, I know those three for fact use it. So. What do they not like about it? <clears throat> I have not heard anything that they do not like. They, they really like the rebate. <laughs> this, this was the question that I asked when I met with, with John and with Shane was, this sounds almost too good to be true. What what is, what, and and honestly, there is no that that we've that I've been able to see or that Shane's been able to see. There's no negative. It doesn't. There's no cost associated to us. It's just they facilitate the payment of these vendors through this virtual setting that is secure, and then we get money back at the end of the year um, by by doing that. Well, and John may be, I'm sorry, John may be able to explain this a little more technically than I can, but MasterCard is the vendor that processes the credit card transactions. And we all know when we use a credit card, those merchants retain a portion of that to pay for the credit card. Extent. So uh, it's my understanding that MasterCard has offered, that's where the rebate comes back. They've offered to give a portion of those fees back to us as, as an educational entity. John. If it's such a good deal, why are other banks not using it? Uh, I 
question on it. John, do you want to come up and answer any questions that they have? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I do, sure. Hi, I'm John O'Shannon. <coughs> Just put it back. We might have to raise a ceiling for him. <laughs> <laughs> Shane did a very good job of explaining the program, actually. Uh, can't answer your question about why other banks aren't doing it. I'm frankly glad they're not. Um, mm -hmm. No, it's something, it's a niche we developed uh, six or eight years ago. And as Shane said, we've got 30 plus, getting close to 40 school districts now using the program. And uh, it's been very, very well received and uh, very positive. I'm glad to hear that he heard positive comments about it, but we have as well. And um, you know, we've wanted to talk to you guys for a while because we think it would really benefit you. And I actually live in Franklin County, so it's my home county. Huh. And, and a lot of banks are doing this. It's kind of like, well, just do a credit card, you know. You get 1% when you buy, if you know, you don't ask a lot of your credit cards. And then if you pay on time and do everything, you get another 1%. So a lot of banks is doing it in different perspectives, not just tailored to one. Yeah, and what's, and what's really kind of set us apart and what's been unique is, as Shane mentioned, we have the integration with Munis. So what, what's really helpful to folks like Shane and his staff is that they can go through the same process they go through to pay every other vendor. And it's just at the very end when you would essentially hit a button to print a bunch of checks. Now for certain vendors, there's going to be a file created and the payments are just going to be made a different way. But the process stays the same. The checks and balances of the process stay the same. The vendor history is retained in your system. All those things that uh, you know, are important to your process, nothing changes. Do we have to vote on this tonight? Can we? Um, that's completely I mean, I'm just your... kind of concerned if why other banks are not offering that. I mean, well, I mean, we've got other school districts are using it. And how long has these others been using it? Uh, well, not, I mean, quite a while. Did you say Woodford used it for two years? Yeah, maybe even longer. Yeah, than that. Amy's been using it, I believe, longer than that. We've had. The biggest districts in the state are using it. Fayette County's uh, been using this for five plus years. Jefferson County uses the program. Kenton County uses it. And Scott, Woodford, Clark, uh, Madison County's coming on board. We've got a lot of smaller counties throughout the state. And Shelby County nearby is using the program. We have own counties using the program. Uh, and I don't time know some of those counties as well because I have a counterpart in Louisville who works directly with them. But, are we locked in for a certain amount of time? I mean, is it based on a yearly thing? Or? There's no commitment. You can leave at any time. You can stop it. How does frankly, this affect our relationship with our bank, though? None uh, whatsoever, because, again, we're still using the bank to um, take in all of our money. It's just a different way of paying the bills. Right now, we have to write a lot of checks. So this is going to reduce a lot of manpower in terms of running checks through. Uh, it is a lot more fraud proof than, than a check writing system. So those were some of the That's things good. that were intriguing to me. Um, frankly, it's, it's one of those things where when I was very skeptical uh, when I first met with them and I had all of my questions answered to the point where I think it's something that we try and, and we try for a year and, 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 okay. and reassess it at, um, next year to see how it's going. How many vendors do we have all together in the estimate number? I know it's a lot, but how many, you know, does this consider every vendor that we're going to be dealing with? The, uh, the, uh, the information I provided for the analysis did provide, uh, we did provide every vendor. They excluded the vendors that they knew at the time that did not accept the program. And then they removed other vendors, uh, construction dollars, example. For example, so uh, that's a really excited about construction again. They excluded uh, amounts paid to construction vendors, so they, they excluded those dollars and did not include them in the estimate. So this is a really conservative um, analysis of how much the rebate would, would provide us. So do we choose what we want to go through that, or do you all? Like you said the contractors are not. Construction's not fed through that. Well, the first, the first uh, 
decision factor is who is willing to accept the card and pay. Oh, I got gotcha. right? So that's number yeah. one. Once yeah. you know who's willing to accept, then it is completely up to you mm -hmm. who you want to pay with a check or who you want to pay with a card. They just have to be willing to take a card, right? Gotcha. I so. see. That, that makes it clear. And to answer your question, 870 vendors wow. were analyzed. That's not the full vendor load, but 870 were analyzed to, to uh, possibly accept the card. But this help you a lot? It, it would help, yes. And, and from my perspective, as, as John mentioned, uh, these electronic payments are much more secure than a check floating around. check. Yeah, that check yeah. can be out. Yes, yes. So uh, if it were up to me, we would pay everything electronically <laughs> and eliminate all checks, period. But, uh, How many so. vendors do you expect to not participate? Well, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, I think they have a really good grasp on the vendors that will accept the payments. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what that number is. Um, somewhere around, is that 430, is that what that number indicates? Well, I mean, we would generally say that, uh, you know, somewhere a little bit south of 50% is mm -hmm. where you're ultimately going to get. Because there's just certain people that yeah, are set up to take a car, mm -hmm. are willing to take a car, they don't want to incur the cost to take a car, they're just not going to. Um, but we've been doing this now for a number of years with a number of districts, so we are very confident that there are a good number of vendors that do accept cards, and frankly, they would rather have your payment via a card. They prefer getting it that way. Um, so that's where, to Shane's point, we feel very confident in the rebate numbers, and if that's a conservative number, we like to err on the side of conservative mm -hmm. rather than, you know, over-aggressive, and you know, a year from now, you say, well, this didn't work out. And well, hmm. Any more questions? Justin, you got any questions? Yep. Meantime, we can just make money. I'm not have a check. Oh, but I think that's good. Should we go ahead and are y'all ready to vote? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Um, you heard the superintendent's recommendation to approve FCS use of Fifth Third Bank virtual uh, pay program. Uh, all in favor, let me know by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you all. And thank you for sharing as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, turf field presentations. All right, turf fields. So we've got three different companies. Uh, thank you, John, by the way, and thank you all. We have three different turf field um, companies that are here to give some presentations tonight. Uh, the board will take no action uh, this evening. We're simply in that information gathering stage to uh, make a determination on um, different companies and what they provide. So our first company is going to pre present is actually um, Hellas Group. And I believe it's William Batts. Is that how you say your last name, William? Yep, just like they call that. Okay, all right. And by the way, we're giving each one of these groups 10 or 15 minutes and ask questions at any time. How are you all doing today? Fine. Great. Uh, thank you guys for inviting me. I, do, I really do appreciate taking time and having us out here. Um, I didn't get a chance to put a presentation together. I kind of wanted to inform you on who Hellas is first. And that way, I open up to questions for, uh, for you all to answer or ask me, and that way I can answer for you. Um, Hellas Construction has been around for about 18 years now. Um, and we're based out of Austin, Texas, but we have an office up in Gordon, in Ohio, which is Youngstown. It's actually my office. I actually live in Columbus, Ohio, because it's easier to tra travel back and forth from Ohio and Kentucky. Um, in Texas, we have about 85% of the market, and we're looking to expand, and that's why we opened up an office in Gordon, Ohio. Um, we're kind of unique and we're only we're the only sports construction company out there that does everything from start to finish. So we manufacture all of our products and we manufacture everything within the United States. Um, we install our own products. So we have over 850 pieces of equipment to install, which allows us to do 125 plus jobs at the same time. So that way, um, we're the only company that you will not outsource. To. Everything you will have will be a Hellas employee. And that way you have only one person to deal with, if that makes sense. Um, with our turf, um, now you have your own engineering. And we have our own engineering and design build company that have our uh, team that has their own architect on staff, so that way you don't have to have those extra architect pieces as well. 
Um, what also makes us unique in the industry is we have a patent on what's called our Helix technology, and that's what's in the Dallas Cowboys stadium. Um, along with the Houston Texans, um, it's going to be in the Las Vegas Raiders, and uh, as well as the Rams. Um, what that is is a twisted fiber, and then which allows the reduce of splash, which is splash is the black stuff that pops out of the air when you see it on the TV, people drag their foot. That also, that helps reduce it, and so that way you're not refilling it as often as you would with a typical dirt. Um, also, what, else, what also differentiates us from our competitors is we use C8 resin instead of C6 or C4 resin. With C8 resin, I like to explain it as a Fiji bottle. If you try to squeeze a Fiji bottle, it's very tough, but if you try to squeeze, not a Sami bottle because it's kind of tough as well, but like a Mountain West bottle, you squeeze that, that's very easy. So that's easy to squeeze, which means it's going to be easier to break over time. Um, with our turf, we have, it's standard across the industry, it's about an eight year warranty. If you do get a pad, we can expand that to 10 years. Um, with our pad, this is it right here. This helps keep the level of the G-Max, which is um, a kid's head hitting the ground. Without a pad, it's 200 Gs. With a pad, we can guarantee it stays under, under 120. The NFL has its mark at 160 right now, and they're actually trying to lower it to 140. Anything above that is deemed unsafe, if that makes sense. And this, what this is also is an extra ins insurance policy to your district in county, in school. Because without this, if you have a 200G field, this is 200Gs without, without the carpet. Kid hanging his head on cement, it's very dangerous. Um, doesn't, I'm not saying it stops concussions, but it helps prevent them. And that way, um, moving forward that you guys, and the lifespan of this goes from anywhere, from, we guarantee 25 years, so you, this is a kind of a one-time thing over three life cycles, or four life cycles of a field. It also helps expand the life expectancy of the turf as well. So we highly recommend it. We don't force it on anyone, um, but we really recommend having a pad underneath your field for future purposes as well. So that's just a short. Um, what kind of what do you use for the field before the you know what is it yep. sand or what are y'all? So we don't use sand. We use pea gravel, and the reason we don't use sand is because if you walk on the beach on on the dry spots, it's very soft. But when you walk on the wet spots, it turns into a solid. And that stops drainage. So we use pea gravel, which is kind of like a stone. Um, that way, water just drains right through, and you're not cutting, you're not making it solid. Does that make sense? Which also helps with the drainage of the field. So um, we also have a patent on using the black rubber with the pea gravel. No one else in the industry can copy that as well. So you want to show us what yeah. you got in your box? Yeah. I don't so, know if you had a dummy in there that you was going nah. to <laughs> So this right here is exactly what's in the Cowboy State right now. You can see the <coughs> fibers. Um, and it comes in any color. That you Sorry, want. It does come in any color. Green is obviously the standard, but you can make it with whatever color you want. Are there costs? So is there a demonstration what it is? You so this is, you know, so this is pretty much exactly from start to finish. So you have the dirt, and then we come down and we compact it and stabilize it which we'll recommend a geo and a topographical survey to make sure that we stabilize the turf properly, because if you don't, then your field could fail. We recommend that as a company, and we believe strongly in it because we've never had a field fail on us in our existence as a company. So do you, are you all the ones who prepare the... We manufacture our turf in-house in, -house in um, Alabama, and that way... But I mean, but the existing you field, yeah. do you, you all prepare, you prepare the that? Field. Yes. That Foundation, or yes, whatever. so we do everything from the ground up. We're the only start to finish business out there that does sports construction for turf. Um, so then you have your drainage system, your drain stone here. This has a picture of a pad which is over there, which I can show you. It's just rubber and pea gravel put together. Um, it's paved just like a track, really. really. Um, and then you have your lay your uh, you're pretty much your linear pad, which is mm -hmm. kind of what you do with a uh, pool. That way, you're not uh, you're not kind of you're protecting the ground underneath it. So that way it stays stable and it's not shifting left and right. And then you have the pea gravel with the infill and the turf tufting into it into the uh, How does it hold up though with we have had massive melting? We're gonna ask you to lower your voices, please, so we can hear. Thank you. Does it hold up really well? Yes, so our fields drain extremely well. Um we've never had a field drain or how much rain, rain will this take? A lot. You won't ever have a problem with the rain. Um, because of the drainage system and in, in higher rain areas, we do a 12 um, inch pipe, which holds an excess amount of water that, that way the field won't float on you if it does happen to flood. 
And so that will, the 12 inch pipe is a very large pipe and we don't use that in very many of our fields. So if rain here is a problem, then we would recommend a 12 inch pipe. Any, any other no. questions for William? No, I don't have any more. All right, so um, William, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate that. Well, and again, we have two fields, and uh, so again, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll want to talk in, in the next little bit about you know, cost and what, what you know, all those things. We'll yeah, definitely. Do. And two fields in one year wouldn't be a problem with our plan. And this is the path that I was talking about. So. You can see it's rather deep though. Okay. And that way, if I poured water over it, water would flow right through it. Okay. That looks a lot better than what that one got. Oh, wow. Yep. And <laughs> you can drive an ambulance on this. You can drive a, you can drive a tractor. You can drive a truck. And that way, it will never break. So the G-Max is 120 or less? 120 or less, and we guarantee it stays under 120 if it's in the field maintained properly. So if an ambulance went out onto the field, they could... This wouldn't break. That wouldn't break. They could drive all over it. Thank you, sir. No problem. Thank sure. you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Next, we um, actually I had that little button there. Uh, next, we have the Moats Group, and from the the Moats Group, we have Stephen Torbeck, who is going to uh, give us a presentation, and he has a, a PowerPoint. So, turn it over to Stephen. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me as well. That's, uh, very good. Make sure we got working here. All right. Perfect. Um, as Superintendent Cobb said, my name is Stephen Torbeck and I'm with the Moats Group. We're based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, just up the road here. Uh, we've got over 43 years of sports field building expertise. So we started and was founded in 1977. Um, got started on the national side, obviously. Uh, synthetic turf was not quite a thing back then. We've built fields on five different continents, over 500 fields built. Um, a little bit closer here to home, we've got 400 synthetic turf surfaces on the ground in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. So a little bit of an eye chart here, but this is a little bit of the history of the company. Um, we've done everything from local high schools, parks and recreation, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals Stadium at Paul Brown, um, Lucas Oil Field, FC Cincinnati Stadium. Um, on the natural side, we recently completed uh, Atlanta Braves New Stadium, Cincinnati Reds, and we've got a team at the Colorado Rockies right now. So I tell you all of that to say, you know, our expertise is truly in building the synthetic turf field for the, the entire cross section of that field. The stone beneath it, um, the drainage, the synthetic turf, the infill. Uh, we take all of what we've learned building high performance natural fields and we apply it to synthetic turf. So what you're looking at here Quick is. Question. A, Why is you do, do you have an engineering design? Not specifically in house, but it's not uncommon for us to pull that in. There's a handful of groups in the area that we work with that specialize in that area that we can pull underneath our contract. Okay. That makes sense. Um, what you see here is kind of our footprint on the synthetic turf side. As I mentioned, we're located just up the road in Cincinnati. Um, put our first field in in 2002. I'll take you through, as I mentioned on the, at the onset, you know, this is truly a construction project. It's not just mm -hmm. a, a synthetic turf project. You know, all the other groups that you're going to talk to have the ability to provide a very nice synthetic turf carpet. Um, there's a lot of parity in the industry. We partner with Shaw Sports Turf, and they're a division of Shaw Flooring, the largest North American flooring manufacturer uh, in, the, in North America. And that allows us to have access to all of their research and development. Um, they're great at manufacturing the carpet. They're, they're building it to our specifications, and we're great at, at building the synthetic turf field. Uh, we are an employee-owned company, so what that means is all of our in-house turf crews the, all 125 of us are that much more invested in the, the outcome of the project as an employee of the company. Um, the process that we typically would go through from here, you know, uh, Superintendent Kopp and I just connected Friday for the first time. I was a little bit late getting over here because I wanted to go see the two sites before I came in and, and tried to speak to them as, as best I could tonight. Really what we would do from here is try to understand a little bit more about the uses, the priorities, and then we would ultimately, ultimately land on the turf system that makes the most sense for you. These things aren't all created equal. Everybody has a very unique set of um, circumstances and a very unique set of uh, needs. So we want to make sure we understand that. So from a use standpoint, I understand these are primarily um, soccer and football, maybe getting out there in the springtime when you got a lot of water out there like we do now, hitting some baseballs and softballs around. Um, when we have a little bit more time to sit down, what we would typically do is, is put a slide like this up and ask you all which of these is the most important. Um, usually we pretty quickly arrive at they're all very important. So how do we kind of 
pull together your system to make the most sense for you all. Um, I won't spend too much time on this today, but this is just kind of a snapshot, a turf 101, if you will. Um, you have two main types of fiber in the industry. As I mentioned, everybody makes a pretty good one nowadays. Um, slip film, it's kind of the durable workhorse. That's what you're going to find at most multi-purpose uh, high school fields, even what you're going to find at the Cincinnati Bengals and uh, up at Lucas Oil Stadium for the Colts. Monofilament. Monofilament tends to be a more soccer specific um, type of surface. The reason for that, it's designed to play like a Kentucky bluegrass or a ryegrass. Fiber stands straight up, it allows for better ball interaction with the surface. A um, quickly growing trend in the market is to combine the two fibers, especially in a multi purpose setting. So, standing here today and not knowing a whole lot, I would, I would venture to guess that slip film or the blended product is ultimately where um, Franklin County schools will land. From an infill option standpoint, most schools in the area have a combination of crumb rubber and sand. Um, there are many other products available in the market nowadays, everything from virgin rubber materials like EPDM, virgin plastics like TPE, um, coconut fibers, walnut shells, you name it, we've tried putting it in turf and they all have a, a slightly unique characteristic um, to help solve for different things like surface heat or certain ball performance that you're after. And then finally you have coated sand. Um, of the non-rubber materials, coated sand is probably the most popular here in the Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana region. There's a few schools up in Louisville that you can go see some of those products if you wanted to. What is TPE and EPDM? What is that? Great question. So TPE is a thermoplastic elastomer. It's a fancy way of saying a, a virgin plastic material. Um, it has some resiliency to it, so it's going to perform a lot like a rubber and sand oh, okay. mixture would. Um, the difference is that it was never used as anything previously. So the car rubber that goes into a synthetic turf field was previously a car or a truck tire. Oh, okay. So EPDM is a, um, a virgin rubber material, chemically very similar to what you'll find at the, <coughs> in the crumb rubber category. Big difference being that it was never used as anything previously. Shock pads, um, as the, the group from Hellas talked about, there are many different ways to uh, to further protect your field in terms of G-Max and shock attenuation, there's a whole host of different shock pads on the market, three or four that we would tend to recommend. Um, we can absolutely build you a safe field without a pad. The, the nice thing about a pad is it gives you quite literally an extra layer of insurance that ensures that your G-Max remains consistent over um, many, many years. Most of those shock pads nowadays have at minimum of two life cycles of turf warranty, so 16 years, um, and many of them even have a 25 year warranty. So what that means is you go to replace the turf in 10 to 12 years, which is the typical lifespan. That's in, that shock pad remains, you just put down the new turf on top. Let's get that one. Uh, talk a little bit more about the most group warranty. So we offer an eight year single source policy. Um, if we're fortunate enough to work with you all and, and have the opportunity to build the base as well, we offer you an eight year warranty both on the turf as well as on that planarity stone drainage beneath it. Um, we don't expect you to have any issues with it, but if you do, sinkhole, something doesn't look right, you call us and we have a 24 hour play critical guarantee. Um, we don't have to take my word for it, I can provide references in the area that can speak to that. But what that means is if there's anything that looks awry with that base or with the synthetic turf, we're going to dispatch a team almost immediately to get to having to take care of it for you. Um, and what's your turnaround time on that if there was some issue with the turf? Yep, our average for the last 12 months was seven hours from the time we took the call until the repair was made. Unless it was something like you've seen some of these sinkholes that fall in, you know, then that would take something. Sure. Like, yeah, I would say a, a catastrophic issue, if you will, is awfully rare. Uh, generally, it's something sinks a little bit, we come in, we open up the turf, we can add some stone to it, compact it, put the turf right back together. So, um, generally speaking, they're not. Or not anything that takes more than a couple hours and a couple guys to get it taken care of. One of the things that we're really looking for is the reason I asked about the uh, having your own engineers and design team mm -hmm. is we don't like change orders. That's one of the big things that we all Absolutely. agree on is change orders. So that's why we don't want to get, you know, our folks over here doing one thing and then y'all, you know, so this way when you go in, you bid the job and we don't have to have these change orders. Absolutely. It, you know, one of the things that we can provide in a situation like that as we kind of get down the road is the average amount of change orders or the number of times we've had to change order on projects in the past just to kind of help you understand that 
we don't want to do that either. That's not that's not helpful for anybody. Um, and we certainly do our due diligence on the front end by bringing in design expertise that acts as a representative on your behalf to ensure that you all are protected down there. Uh, maintenance wise, you know, with our with our group, we'll provide some maintenance equipment to help you care for the field. Um, we also offer an annual service program, which we can talk more about at a later time. Um, I did have quickly have um, our internal operations team pull together a couple of uh, proposed um, footprints for you all. So this would be if you were to put synthetic turf throughout the field that's just under 100,000 square feet. Um, you know, Mr. Kopp had mentioned that uh, potentially considering just the, one that's the, the field itself, that brings it down to about 80,000 square feet, just for reference. Same thing here at Franklin County. And do you go back to that real quick? Sure. And just so you all see on there, those are aligned for both football and soccer uh, in, in both of those models. Okay. Okay. You'll have many opportunities and, and many meetings to design on colors, logos, and that sort of thing. Some of the projects that we've done here in Kentucky, you can see there, we'll actually be working with Kentucky State uh, beginning next week, actually. So Kentucky State's putting in synthetic turf at their stadium field. Um, we're fortunate to work with them on that project. Um, just finished great crossings down the road not too long ago as well. So the two new fields right off of, uh, it's 4552 there. Um, our moats were fields. A couple photos to run through here. So there's great crossings. This is Spalding University up in uh, Louisville. Here's their softball field. Scott County. St. Xavier football and baseball. This is one of the locations where you can see that coated sand product if, if there was interest. So you're going to do K State? Wow. Yes, ma'am. What questions can I answer for you all? I answered all of mine. Yeah. Okay. You want to show us some of your products? Sure, or I can uh, actually pass these around if you want. <clears throat> Around. So, probably a little bit in the weeds, so to speak, uh, for today. But what you have there is our 24 7 product that's the slip film, as well as our cross flex, which is the dual fiber. Yeah. Essentially, a summary of what we just reviewed there. But it's more oh, thank you. Did you hear that? Is it the sand? <laughs> Is that that's, what they call coated sand? sand? Oh, the rubber and sand, okay. Yeah, and in this area, probably 97, 98% of the fields are going to be rubber and sand. Now, drag your hands across it. What's, what's the identity of that in this area? Is it just because of all the rain and you, you want oh, the rubber and sand? Yeah. Um, yeah. Economical. It's yeah. most economical of all the other solutions out there. Most yeah. others are required that you have shock pads. Sand forever. Okay. Shock pads going to have a match. Well, Justin, that one's. Oh, which one's right? If you have the pad, you like match or whatever. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going to have pads. Most of the people that are going to have pads now are going
Uh, we're going to go ahead with construction, and I think uh, Mr. Copper will do a train update. Train invoices 31039-3834 in the amount. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I went right to trying to pay them and not getting the update. Amanda, give us an update. I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's not much to update. Um, the control group right now is working on the graphics for the ensemble, which means building the floor plans and building little 3D models digitally of your mechanical equipment. Uh, we're looking at that being done probably around the middle of March. Then we'll have what we call a ribbon cutting. We just want to, when one of our engineers goes in and make sure that they reference all the points we want. Once he's come back and says it's okay and we've made any changes, then we'll have other training. So we're looking at that around the end of March. Okay, so it, when is this should be wrapped up? In March is what we're shooting for. Okay. I was over to Franklin County School the other night, and it looks nice in the gym. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I was just going to ask real quick with Travis. Uh, did uh, the exit signs and stuff, I know when they was doing all that work, and we got them all got, in place yeah, now. Yeah, we got them working on the day. We still like the ones in the main hall. Um, our guys actually got done with the electric in the field house, so we're catching up on our other work right now. Okay. We've been tied up down at the field house for the last part of three or four weeks with our electric. Well, we passed our permit the other day, so now we're catching up on exit signs and bleachers and everything else. So I was just concerned list. about them exit signs being. We did get a few of them fixed, but we still like the ones on the map and social studies hall. I think that's all we like. Okay. Right there. Everybody loves 1957. Well, we, got a, we got to run new power to those. Um, so we got to steal power from somewhere and run it down, back down there until. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it, brother. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'll just any more questions? No more? Okay. Fine. Thank you. All right. Now on to the now on to the train invoices. Uh, one is in the amount of two thousand six hundred seventy nine dollars and seventy three cents, and the other is in the amount of three thousand four hundred six dollars and eighty six cents are attached for your approve, approval and re your review and approval. Recommended motion is to approve the train invoices as presented. You heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. Uh, all in favor, let me know by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Superintendent reports to the board. So we have personnel actions that have been taken since the last meeting of the board are presented for your information only. Uh -huh. uh, reports from school council. Draft minutes from school site-based decision-making councils are presented for your review. And attendance report. Kyle. I have for you tonight month six attendance. We ended month six with uh, an enrollment of 6,175 students. Our overall attendance was 94.03. Uh, and our winning school for month six goes out to Bridgeport at 94 oh, really? and 8,600. Hey. So congratulations to you, Bridgeport. Thank you, Kyle. A superintendent's report. I'm um, going to keep my remarks fairly brief, but I do want to address something that's in the news uh, quite a bit recently, and that's the uh, coronavirus information. We have been in contact with Judy Mattingly at the health department, and I wanted to uh, assure everyone watching and everyone here in the crowd tonight and, and our Board of Education that we were taking this uh, situation very seriously. It is, uh, thankfully, there have been no cases in the Commonwealth uh, thus far, but we're also very aware that that, you know, is probably not likely going to be the, the situation moving forward. So, uh, for now, what we can do is continue to follow the, the health department's recommendations. They've been listening to what the CDC has been uh, recommending, and that is uh, lots of hand washing, um, you know, making sure that you don't touch your face, trying to limit handshakes, uh, which is hard to do, and, uh, and so have a lot, a lot of fist bumping and, and things like that. And uh, we have to treat this situation for, for the time being until we receive further information, much like we would a major flu outbreak. So if, if we were to have a major flu outbreak, we would take kind of the same uh, look at it 
but with a little more severity. Uh, there have been, you know, I think we've all seen in Japan where they've had to cancel school. And obviously we have not, with, with no cases yet in, in Kentucky, we, we haven't had to do that. And we're very hopeful that we won't have to. That would be something that the uh, Commissioner of Education working with the governor uh, would, would communicate with us. We do have non-traditional instructional days that we can use in our district. Uh, we have nine of those left that we're able to use if, if we get into a situation where uh, we would have to close. There is, uh, you know, there's always the situation if, if a state of emergency would be declared, then uh, there's a lot more flexibility in terms of what we would be able to do as a school district. Uh, thankfully, we're not at that point yet, but understand we're, we're monitoring the situation, we're talking about it, uh, and we're working with the health department. And as, as of now, uh, those are, those are the, the main steps that any school district really can take at this point. Um, any questions about that? Just thank okay. you for the information. Okay, thank you. Update. Thank you. Uh, monthly financial report. Okay, <clears throat> we have uh, the January 2020 Treasury Report and Monthly Financial Report for you review and approval. I'll read that report to you. At the, as of December 31st, 2019, the beginning balances were $28,754,845.26. After several dis deposits and disbursements, uh, our balance as of January 31st, 2020, in both of our uh, bank accounts, we still have the community bank account that still has some funds left over in it from last year. Um, but our, with, with that and our traditional bank, our total balances are $28,277,195.84. Uh, seeing that, the recommended motion is to approve the January 2020 financial report as presented. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Uh, is there approval for January 2020 financial report? So approval. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Uh, motion is made. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? In the second, is there any discussion? Yes. I was going to ask. You said something about there's still money over in the other bank. Uh, what's how much was in that other bank? Yeah. Let me pull that up for you real quick. It was a little over five hundred thousand dollars. I got to make it big so I can see it. <laughs> it's uh, five hundred seven thousand eight hundred nine dollars and seventy eight cents. Uh, Shane, you, you want to say, you know, address that? Yeah, the reason we still have that account open, we still have a couple of entities depositing money into that account monthly. Okay. So I didn't want to close that until we get, it's, we've asked, requested, sent all the documentation multiple times, and the, um, the, we're still trying to get that transition out. Yeah, so just being safe and sorry. Yeah, yeah, as soon as we get those deposits, I don't think there's been any outflow to that account in several months. Um, so as soon as we get that deposit changed to our traditional account, we will close the, transfer the monies and close that account. Okay. Any other questions, please? All in favor of the uh, recommendation, let me know by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion carries. And we want to discuss some items that... Uh, yeah, so can you say what those... Um, pull those, well, those items... Eight, uh, Roman number 8, D7. 8, uh, D7. Yeah, that's a contract. Let's talk about... Uh, um, actually, I think we have to do a... Um, I don't know why it was under consent form. I think we have to do a motion first on the... to, um, uh, to approve, and then we can do a uh, discussion of items. Is that, do you want to do that first? If do you want to, something that we may need to pull? Well, we can, we can pull and talk about it first. That's that's okay, no, that's I mean, no problem. Because you had already talked about it. So, yeah, absolutely. That's fine. So, D7, which is contract with Marion Stouffer, request approval of a personal service contract between Franklin County Schools and Marion Stouffer for payroll finance consulting services. Shane, you want to address? Uh, yes. So, we had a payroll person that retired recently. And Ms. Stouffer, uh, we're going to contract with her to help do some training in our payroll department when we hire new staff. Okay. Can you not do it? Uh, no, not, no. It, I was wondering because before, and I, I could be corrected, but I thought before we had training, uh, didn't uh, 
Uh, Kentucky School Board Association help us with training? Not that I'm not, aware of. I thought they, <coughs> they showed was finances. Is that correct? Finances. Um, so, have we ever done this before? Yeah. That's, Yes, we have. When we had um, our benefits person retire this past year in the uh, Holly Atkins department, uh, we had a, a, a benefits services uh, person that retired, and we did bring in a consultant to work with us to get us through. When this retirement happened, it kind of caught us at a point where uh, Shane has requested some assistance, and this is not going to be, we have the position posted, so as soon as we're able to get that um, position hired and we, we can actually send that person to training so we're not expecting this to be an extensive piece at all correct this is just to kind of get you through the next this few weeks. This individual we're talking about this individual that we're talking about is it a length of time do you know the length of time that we're going to use her by this person? Well as Mr. Cobb said it'll be Depending upon when we get someone hired, okay. and then the period of time that it will take to get that person trained and then our other existing payroll person to where they're competently able to produce a payroll. Uh, I don't think it'll be um, a very long period of time. It may require more time at the front end once we hire someone to train it, but you know, after a few weeks, I think that we'd be able to just use them more on a consulting basis, a couple of hours here and there, sprinkled in kind of situation. Okay. So, go ahead. I was just going to ask it. Uh, it says mileage to be reimbursed from where does she come? I believe she lives in Versailles. That's a, that's a common characteristic. Of and $40 an hour is typical? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for that type of position. Yeah, they ain't paying them minimum wage but for that type of training because that's a high demand. But this is something that, again, needs to be done. Yeah. It does need to be done, and we also we're going to make sure that it's a minimal amount. Um, you know, we, we, we need to get someone hired and, and in here working. So um, that's something that we can track uh, and, and, and stay on top of. And so, how did you come about this particular person? Well, there's actually a business card on the desk <laughs> over there, and I pulled it out and asked Randy Cutright if he knew her, and she actually worked for him at Scott County, retired several years ago, and she does this type of consulting work for a lot of other districts, so she's pretty well known in that, those circles as a payroll trainer. So That helps out. Helping me understand this a little more. So that's the reason why I was wondering under room number eight on the approval of job description, this is not going to be the same person, correct? It's going to be somebody else that you apply for. Okay. That's why I was having confusion because of approval of another job description. I didn't know if it was going to be an edit job, a new job. Yes. Yes, this, this job that you see on there that it is a new position of financial analyst, and we can talk about that if you'd like to now. Yes, please. Yeah. Is that so, okay with the board? Yeah. 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 What number is that, Mr. Uh, Fletcher? It's eight. eight. Uh, eight. 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 Room number eight, eight. Eight F. Okay. F, yes. Sorry. I'm, I'm just trying no, to. Me too. Yeah. So um, as a result of our audit this year, uh, one of the recommendations was to uh, that we're running a little lean in terms of the finance department, in terms of oversight and some internal auditing and analysis. And the audit actually made the recommendation that we consider expanding and adding this position that would provide oversight for some things like uh, obviously internal audits and audit controls and some of the things that we've talked about as we've gone through this year, um, but also some of those areas like um, booster and activity uh, funds at, at the school level, being able to uh, focus specifically on those. Okay. Shane, is there anything you can add to that? Uh, no, that's, that's predominantly the issue is just to really help monitor the compliance with school activity funds, after school programs, those types of things, so that we make sure uh, we're in good shape in those programs. So. And we want to make sure we're right on the red book. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. 100 percent correct. That's one big right. issue. Okay, that explains that one. Um, 
And really explains the uh, Roman numeral eight F three. So it, that really explains too. Yes, I understand that. Unless the board had something else they want to say. No, I didn't have anything. Else. Okay. So uh, let's go back to the consent form. Uh, consent, please. Agenda. Is there a motion? Yes. Yeah, I'll read that. I'm sorry. The consent agenda is presented for your approval. The recommended motion is to approve the consent agenda as presented. You've heard of Superintendent's recommendation. Uh, is there approval of the consent agenda as presented? I'll make a motion to approve. The motion is made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Any more discussion? Say no. We'll call, call to vote. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. And I just want to thank Chuck for recognizing those and getting that explained. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And at this point, before we get into adjournment, uh, would the board like to, um, yes. Mr. Vessio uh, is here, yes. and he would like to address you if, if you if we can give him about 10 minutes. <coughs> yeah, 10 or 15 minutes, yes, I'm sorry. Mr. Vessio, good to see you. Thank you for coming. It was parked next door. <laughs> Is this, first of all, thank you all again for having me over here. I appreciate it. I know everybody's tired. Uh, my name is Doug Vessio. I'm president of Vessio Sports Fields. We're based out of Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, we've been in business now for almost 40 years. Uh, we're a design build firm uh, for both natural and synthetic turf uh, field systems. And um, again, thank you all for. Uh, invited me over here. I, I don't know what y'all heard before. I didn't join the others, but I'll just sort of try to walk you all through this again. Um, we've built a number of fields throughout the state, Indiana, uh, Tennessee. We try to work our way uh, in, in this region, in the Lexington area, Frankfurt, Louisville area, western part of the state, and eastern. We sort of try to stay in that area, our geographical area that we can both service our customers and get to our clients within a two or three hour drive, which is very important. Uh, I'm not sure how this. Um, this we went ahead and provided a rendering. I think you all got the same rendering uh, that we gave you a couple weeks ago. And again, this is just similar to building a house. Uh, you know, when you get into the colors and the logos, those tend to get uh, sort of adding cost to things. But uh, this is what we came up and presented with you all a couple weeks ago with, uh, with just a, a generic rendering uh, to get a start to see what you all liked or didn't like about this particular uh, design. Um, we always start off on any of our fields by going out and doing some exploratory work, uh, you know, checking utilities, site utilities, existing drainage. Um, this is uh, Western Hills. Uh, we just did a uh, survey, just finished it up today, actually, uh, trying to get the elevations on this field. We always believe when we start on a project that we have to go out and visit the site, see what's existing there, what's going to get in our way, what's going to present potential problems or hazards. And then we always um, start off with initial survey grid. And that's the most important thing. I think I spoke to you all before about that. Uh, trying to figure out how much earthwork we need, the type of soil that, uh, that we'll need to move and what we'll need, what's available there, how much we'll have to remove from the uh, location or bring back in. So that's what, uh, this is just pre-construction, what we typically do on a field. This happened to be the University of Kentucky. It was a design build uh, project for us. And uh, we started off uh, but that was a sand base field. And so we had to design a system that was still going to hold up that field. Typically, they're built over native clay soil. This one was 18 inches of sand and gravel. So we designed this field. If they decide to go back to natural grass later, we just take the synthetic turf off, take a little bit of the gravel, and they're back to natural grass again. Um, but we have to go in and do a soil survey uh, and, and figure out what that base work is so we don't have a failure later. We've even known sometimes to come in and actually do a, a, a mock-up, a two-foot mock-up on the field to see how it's going to drain. This is, our, of course, the site work. I don't want to bore you with all these details. I'm just trying to walk you through the process if you haven't already seen it. 
But typically, we'll take out anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 cubic yards of soil, or we'll need that depending on if we have to fill or, or uh, remove or bring in soil. Now, I'm hoping the soil at Franklin County High School can be used over at, at uh, Western, Western Hills, because uh, there's going to be a lot of soil removed off of one. You're going to need some more Western Hills. So we get down to the base. That's a, we try to get down to a clay sub-base. Uh, so it's firm and compacted, so we don't have any settling. What's where we see a lot of field failures, not us, but we've seen it, where the base has, still has a lot of organic matter in it, and this part has to be tested and proof rolled, and the soil has to be tested so that we know that uh, we don't have any uh, compost or some other organic matter in it that could cause some problems later. Uh, then we've got two types of drainage systems we use. This is what we call a trench drain. Uh, what's what we prefer to do. It's a little bit more expensive to do it this way. Obviously, um, there's flat panel drains. It's sort of the norm in the industry. Uh, that's another good way to carry off some of the water, but it's, it's, just, it's just a different process. It's a little less expensive, quite a bit, but this was at Eastern Kentucky University uh, about 10 years ago. The field's still in play. Again, a lateral drain to get the water off the field. And then we get our base construction. And then we come in after the gravel. We put a capstone in, about four to five inches of capstone. Uh, we finish it off with laser. Every, every stage of the field has to be within a top certain tolerance. The clay base is in the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, half inch per 25 feet, meaning it can't, it can't bury. You can't have a pocket in it. And then the final grade, we get certified within a quarter of an inch. So it's, it's as smooth as your table when we're finished with it. And we recommend that they get certified by a licensed uh, engineer so that there's proof that the conformance survey um, is within a 25 foot grid. Again, the capstone, uh, we call it a triple check. We do a string line. First, we get a conformance survey, then we do a string line of the field, make sure there's no undulations. And then we finish it up with a 10 foot uh, level, just to make there's, sure that there's no pockets or undulations in there. On the synthetic turf fields, if there's any movement or settlement at all, it'll show up. You'll see the lines wiggle, unlike you do in grass fields. So it's important to get this sub base uh, uh, tolerance is perfect. Uh, a lot of the fields are going to shock pads. Larry, you and I, we talked about this last time. Yeah. I think shock pads are great. If you can afford it, uh, they, they, are more, they do add quite a bit of cost to it. They're, in my opinion, they're not necessary, but uh, you need to go with, the, like we mentioned before, the turf that's got a taller fiber to have more rubber infill in it uh, to sustain that turf a little bit longer. But if this is something that you all want to do, it adds, it adds about a dollar per square foot to the cost of the field. So you're looking at about 80,000 on Franklin County and then probably over 100 at uh, Western Hills. Um, if it's done properly, you probably won't feel a difference just walking on it. We'll feel the big difference or a receiver will if he's up in the air or she's up in the air, a soccer player, and she gets knocked over and tumbles. Uh, they'll probably, it's a safety feature if you're up high. But for low impact and linemen and running backs, they'll probably never feel this at all so but I didn't you know it's a good option if, you, if it can if it's something that you can afford now the shock pad uh, is that something that you could drive vehicles on and all that is that's good? a great question I, I wouldn't recommend driving a car on it uh, I tell people if you've got somebody hurt you got to get an ambulance on it you got to get them on there and I've had vehicles on there before but it's not something I want someone to do on they, just, basis, they, yeah. they, they get in their head well he did it and, or she did it and we'll do it but but typically you want to use something with turf tires, a golf cart, uh, an RTV, you pull a trailer out there with an RTV, something with low impact. Um, but again, we've had vehicles on them. You just have to be careful not do too quick turns on them. Um, go through here, so I know you're in a hurry. Again, you've probably seen this. This is what we call our anchoring turf system. And every field has to have a, a curb the notch in it for the turf to rest and to hold all the, uh, the material, the, the stone and the gravel and everything else inside of it. Um, so that's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just a real point, it's an expensive part of it. 
the one at your tracks will probably have these were poured we have a machine that pours them in place this one these were poured in place the ones on your field will probably have to be hand done simply because you've already got an existing track it's hard to do it that way well, let me ask you something on that now that will there be a how many feet from that field will those concrete that's another good question well you want a 15 foot buffer area if you have it now some of the fields we do are they just don't have the room typically football will have the room when you try to stretch it out for soccer and you've got a real narrow field uh you may not get that in there you may only get it just depends on how wide you want to make your soccer field but i tell people if you can get three to four steps it's really important um, a lot of fields don't have that they don't have the luxury of doing that cut you'd have to cut the track out and widen the track and some other things but 15 foot is a standard safety zone. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just concerned, you know, if somebody got knocked off and hit right, you know, maybe hit on right on them. Well, the other important thing is it's more important in the back of the end zones. We see sometimes people will, the carpet roll comes in a 15 foot wide. And to save some money, they'll cut one roll and do seven feet on one end, seven the other. That's really not a lot of proof. You really need to stretch that back of that end zone and get another 15 feet behind it so that a receiver or a goal uh, running back is running through there, he has some room to, to stop. And you can put some pads over these or you can let the turf grow over them. But that is a great question, but you need, you need 15 foot around it if possible. <clears throat> so some of the NFL fields uh, don't have that. I mean, the back of the end zones, they've got maybe 10 feet and uh, just the way they built the stadiums in the old days. Um, it's just a typical, not a typical turf installation. Once we've got everything approved, we come in, we start laying from the back of the end zone or the 50 yard line and we start laying the turf rolls out. Uh, this particular uh, process was a stitch and glue. We stitch some fields, we glue some fields and some people say one way is better than another. If you, if you stitch it right or if you glue it right, it's going to be done. It's, it doesn't really make any difference which way you do it. Regardless, 30 city fields would be glued. You still have to glue in the numbers, the hash marks, some of the soccer inlays, uh, the logos, all that needs to be glued in. But the long panels uh, going from sideline to sand, sideline can either be glued or stitched. In this particular project, they want us to glue them and stitch them, which uh, is good again if they could afford it, but it, it was it just cost a little bit more money to do it that way. That's the only time we've done that, matter of fact. Uh, this is Commonwealth, I keep calling it Commonwealth Stadium. I'm sorry, I have a hard time calling it Kroger Field. But anyway, this is the finished product of that field, University of Kentucky. Again, they chose us as a design build firm to come up with this. And uh, it's great, it was a fun job to do. This is their practice facility we did three years ago, which was a Brass, uh, sand based grass field in the center. And they had training, they had the same turf on the outside on the south end. And then we put in the training hills. Uh, they had really three different types of turf on this field. But that was another fun project. Uh, this was a multi purpose field in East Tennessee. Uh, it was a soccer, soccer, football, softball field. Uh, we converted, this is the second time we did the practice facility at another practice. Uh, originally, we put in the synthetic turf field at the bottom. That's now in its uh, 16th year. Needs to be replaced. Uh, didn't have a pad on it. It's a short pile height, but it's, it's got its life out of it. And we originally built the, the natural turf sand base fields at the top. And two years ago, they hired our firm to design and come in and, and uh, convert that over to the recreation field. I'm trying to go fast because I know you guys uh, are, are need to get home. Girls get home. This is Newport High School uh, up in Northern Kentucky. Beachwood High indoor uh, facility, batting facility. Again, the University of Kentucky uh, showing the program. Let me ask you, did you say Kentucky was uh, wanted to have the option to be able to remove the turf from the well, I, if they wanted to? We designed it if they decided to go back that we just put a very fine layer of gravel down we had it tested so if that someday they decide to go back to, to natural grass it'd be a pretty easy uh 
I mean, did they have y'all to design it that way, or was or was there a reason behind that? Well, we both, we got together with the athletic directors and said, hey, we we take it all out down to gravel. It's going to be harder to convert it back. And they they wanted to design for us to do a design where if they want to convert it back, they could. I don't think they'll ever go back. Not in not in my short lifetime. That I don't think. But that's. Uh, Again, what they did is they had uh, two or three people they chose from, and they took, I guess they just decided what type of design they wanted. They gave us some parameters to work with. But no, they didn't say, hey, uh, we don't. We, we may go back to natural turf someday. Give us, it's just, it. we just sort of presented that to them as our oh, way right. of doing it. Right. We just finished this up this summer at Henry Clay High School in Lexington. Uh, this was at Carroll, uh, Carroll County. Uh, about three years ago, uh, we redid we uh, Paul Orange Dunbar. I think that was in 13. It was like 2013. Uh, our manufacturing company at Global Sports won the award uh, to take out the, the New Orleans Saints a couple years ago. We assisted them putting the, the Saints field in. Talk about a lot of money spent. They get a new field every year. They use it 15 times a year, and they get a new field every year. So. Um, that's there's our guys uh, down there working on the field. That was two years ago, two summers ago. At Global Sports, that's the professional fields. We weren't on that project, but that's another one of their professional fields that they've done. Again, the uh, Broncos indoor, <coughs> Pittsburgh Steelers indoor, Chicago Bears indoor. Uh, just real quickly, we also offer an end of life service. Uh, we can we have equipment that can take and remove the turf. We can actually remove the rubber, put it back in the field again, so we're not taking it to the landfill. And you talked the other day about reusing some things over. So, 12 years from now, 15 years from now, you decided that you're finished with the field. We can extract that rubber out of there and put it back in the field and, and save you some money. Uh, this is just a maintenance service we provide. Uh, it's hard to see the picture, but. Believe it or not, that's it, it, the middle picture there. Is there a pointer? But in the, the middle picture, that's just all the debris that you wouldn't see in the field until you clean it. We got you wouldn't necessarily want to use that big tractor to do that, would you? Unless it had turf. So every tire we've got, we got tractors bringing that. They're, they're just designed for that payload. They have okay. wide, wide tires on it. And that's actually a small tractor. It looks big with the loader, but it's a, about a 45 horse. But that's, you know, hairpins, bite guards, everything you can imagine you use, they get embedded down in that turf. And uh, with this machine, we can come in once a year and extract it out just to get it, refurbish it back again. I'm just trying to tell you, I'm only about 30, 40 minutes away. I know I was here late, but I was outside. But, uh, you know, we've got a great group of people. Like I said, we're starting our 39th year. Even if we weren't down the street, uh, just a plug for our group, our team, there's not a better firm in the country. And uh, people choose us for a reason. We come back, we honor what we do, and we stand behind our work. So uh, that's it. <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Bessio? No. As you have you your engineering and uh, engineering firm and design company. I have an in-house engineer at, at our office, yes, sir. We use a lot of associates that we've been dealing with for almost 35 years to work with us. Okay. All right. Thank Any you. Questions? Thank you very much, Thank sir. You. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Let me say we've heard uh, three different people come to share tonight. Uh, I'd just like to ask the board, do you all think that uh, we should let the staff be looking into this? Maybe bring recommendations back? Or what, what direction do you all want to go? Well, I think with the superintendent, to, you know, get, you know, let him take the lead on this and get what we, you know, and then we can put it out there if all three of these companies yep. is, uh, uh, you know, got the, got the state contract, you know, state yes. contract price, then we can let them do the bidding and give us, you know, different, but we want to be able to have, if we say we want patent, yep. then we want all of them to be a patent. If yes. we want to do it a certain way, you know. So then. what I would recommend is our next step is um, Mr. Fields, uh, Trampas, and myself are going to have a meeting 
uh, down at KDE with Greg Dunbar and uh, probably actually bring Shane with us as well from a finance perspective uh, to talk with him about the, making sure that the three companies are on the bid list, so to speak, and um, then we'll, what we're going to ask them to do is prepare some, some uh, estimates for you as a board. And, and if you direct me that, hey, we want to see what it's going to cost to put a pad down with that, then uh, I'll direct them to yeah, include like that. Yeah, I'd like to do it both we ways. We do it both ways. And, uh, Look at Kyle's yes, and so at the, uh, at the next board meeting, uh, actually what we would like to do maybe even a, a later this month, potentially, depending on how long it's going to take them, is uh, I'd love to be able to come back and give you figures at that one. If it's, if it's not if, at April at the latest, because if it's something that you as a board decide that we want to go and do this, we're, like I said, we're going to need to make a decision pretty quickly for an August 1st. Okay. Well, and one of the things that I'd ask is I wanted to try to see what it would cost to add those other two lanes. If we had to make do some moves or what have you. Yep. I really hate to see Franklin County be the stepchild of Western Hill. You know what I mean? And that's if, if uh, and they're not allowed to have any uh, uh, state yep. track. So they can have smaller meets, but they can't have a big one. That's absolutely correct. And we did look, um, and just us looking at it, not a professional yet, but I will have a professional look at it. I know it's going to be a very significant cost because when, when we looked at it, it's you're not going to just have to move one set of bleachers. You're going to oh, have to I move that. two. I went out and looked at it myself. Yes, sir. You're going to have to kind of move, you know, because of the... The careers, I mean, the front county careers center. So I'll have a professional give you an estimate um, for the number of track meets that would be. You know, it's uh, it would be a very significant cost. But again, I'll gladly present that information to you. Well, and that's uh, I talked with when we was at the uh, uh, conference. There was a company that actually installed those bleachers. They said they would give us an estimate on. You okay. Know, like moving though. We'll get with Mr. Fields on that and we'll see we'll, what that would, you know, okay. just to get an idea. Okay. Great. So, y'all okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, we'd like for you to go ahead and look at that, Mr. Cobb. Yes, sir. Is there a motion? Is there anything you can bring up? I'll make a motion to adjourn. The motion has been made. Is there a second? No second. Second, second, second. Nobody wants to leave. Just bring a second. I'm in favor of saying aye. Well, just uh -huh. a minute. Pop in on that. Uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, he don't know for a minute. Yeah.